My nominee for the single strangest politics story we covered all year in 2013 was the story that we did last month about Idaho. In Idaho, in southwest Boise last year, the voters of District 15 elected a new state representative. It was a Ron Paul guy in Idaho, staunch conservative. He had the endorsement of Idaho's high-profile Tea Party Republican Congressman Raul Labrador. But soon after Mark Patterson was elected, things started to seem a little off kilter. Turns out he had said in his campaign materials that he had gone to the University of Southern California. He went to USC. Uh, in reality, he never went to USC. His campaign materials also said he was a petroleum engineer. He was not actually an engineer at all, petroleum or otherwise. His campaign materials said he had been a professional bicyclist. But the local press in Boise soon figured out that he had never had a professional cycling license. He does own a lube company. He did get elected last year. This picture shows him in the legislature having some sugary snacks. There are a number of verifiable things about him that have been verified, but there was a lot about him also that just seemed made up. And then came the part about the rape charges. Turns out that Republican state rep Mark Patterson in Idaho had twice been arrested and charged with forcible rape. The second time was in Ohio, and he was acquitted of those charges. But the first time in Florida, he pled guilty. He was initially charged with forcible rape. He pled guilty to assault with intent to commit rape. And he did some time in jail and then some time on probation. Years later, after moving to Idaho, Mark Patterson, before he ran for state rep, uh, applied for a concealed carry permit for a handgun. Now, under Idaho law, and pretty much everywhere, you cannot get a permit to carry a gun if you have committed a violent felony, like, say, assault with intent to commit rape, to which this guy pled guilty. But he did not admit that on his application for his gun permit, which means he lied on his gun permit application. And when the sheriff, to whom he had applied for the permit, found out about the lie, the sheriff revoked the guy's permit. And then, then, then comes the part of the story that makes it the single strangest politics story we covered all year long. I mean, it is one thing for the citizens of Boise to know that they just elected this guy with the violent felony conviction related to rape. And okay, he lied on his permit application about it. And okay, he got his gun permit revoked because of it. The amazing part of this story is that actually, once the Idaho statesman put this all together and reported this bombshell story last month, the bottom line of the story was that the guy didn't actually get his gun permit revoked. The guy got his gun back. Because the laws that say you can't have a gun if you're a violent felon or a rapist, those laws don't apply to you in Idaho if you are also an elected official in Idaho. Dude got his gun back because he is a state legislator. And the laws about who gets gun permits and who doesn't in Idaho don't apply to elected officials. So thank you, Idaho. You're like a self-esteem boost for all the other states. Because other states may have ridiculous stuff on the books. But as far as I know, nobody else has a special law on the books just to make sure that their elected officials who are rapists can have all the guns they want. With that, you guys make all the other states feel normal. Well, now this story has a new choose-your-own-adventure ending for Idaho. Because now, finally this week, Representative Mark Patterson has decided to resign from the state legislature. Southwest Boise will have to choose his replacement. And that means he will no longer be an elected official in the state of Idaho. Which means, at least technically, that he should lose his gun permit now. The sheriff wanted to revoke it for his felony and lying on his application. He was protected from that because he was a state legislator. But now he's quitting the legislature. Will Idaho take away his guns? Idaho has a decision to make on that. Idaho also has to make a decision about whether it wants to keep on the books its law that says if you're an elected official, laws don't apply to you anymore like they do to everyone else in the state. More ahead. Stay with us.